My brothers and sisters in Islam, why am I even talking about being a millionaire? Didn't the Prophet wasallam say that, and he made a dua to Allah, Oh Allah, raise me with the poor? Didn't he say, Oh Allah, make me die with the poor and raise me up with the poor? Didn't the Prophet wasallam lead a life of simple existence and sustenance? Don't you know of the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, where he spent two months with nothing but the two black things, water and dates, because water looks black in the dark, water and dates to feed him. So why in the world are we even talking about this? My friends, I had the same question when I went to my Shaykh Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shanqiti hafizahullah and I said, Ya Shaykh, in our time today, should I be poor or should I be rich? Because I cannot reconcile this fact. My dad says, be a doctor, be a lawyer so you can be rich. My mom says something similar to be rich. But my religion seems to say something else. How do I reconcile this? So my Shaykh, may Allah have mercy upon him, told me something very beautiful. And I want to share that with you. He said, Ya Tawfiq, the strong Muslim that Allah loves is the Muslim that has the world in his hand and Allah in his heart. Amazing. He said he has a world in his hand. He plays with it as he wishes, does with it what he wants. He helps who he wants. The money is in his hand, not in his heart. What's in the heart is the hereafter. And this is the essence of Zuhud. A man came to Abu Yusuf, the student of Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and said, Ya Imam, why don't you write to us a book on Zuhud? Write to us a book on Zuhud. What does Zuhud mean? Ascetism, leaving the world, shunning the world. This is how we normally describe it. So Abu Yusuf said, I have already written a book on Kharaj for you. What? I have already written a book about Kharaj. What's Kharaj again? What to do with the produce of this earth and how to distribute it according to Islamic fiqh. So people were confused and, and Abu Yusuf simply closed the door and went away. How do you understand the statement of Abu Yusuf? The way we understand it is that Zuhud is not what we think Zuhud is. Zuhud doesn't mean that you have to be a fakir. Zuhud and being a zahid does not mean that you have to be poor, my friends. It means that in your heart, in your heart, the world is not there. In your heart and in your mind, the concern is not for this world. The concern is for the hereafter. But in your hand, have the wealth of this dunya to do with it what you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be strong believers. And Nawawi rahimahullah said, by ijma of the scholars, a strong believer that has money and wealth is far more beloved to Allah than a weak believer, a weak worshipper of Allah who does not have any wealth and he is a poor man. Why is that? Ya Nawawi rahimahullah, he said that in al-majmu. Why did he say that? Because ultimately a person who has wealth and money, he can help himself and help others. He can give izzah and honor to Islam and Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ, when he needed camel, when he needed armors, what did he do? He asked Uthman, Uthman gave him 10,000 camels in one go. This is izzah and honor. This is wealth and power. My friends, in the 21st century, it is not honorable to be poor. It is not honorable for you to think I am a great Muslim simply because, you know what, alhamdulillah, I have little money, etc. No, I want you to be rich. I demand you be rich. I order you to be rich. Rich not in your heart, with the wealth in your heart, no, but in your hands. In your heart have nothing but Allah. In your heart have an attachment for the hereafter. Do not shun the world, but shun worldliness. Does that make sense? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, numerous verses in the Quran, tells us to have strength. Allah says, وَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُ مِنْ قُوَّةِ And prepare for those who plot and plan against you, whatever you can from strength. He also says about secular knowledge. And what is secular knowledge and these all other types of knowledge, except that He gives us economic strength, 
physical strength in this world. He talks about it and he says in the Quran, وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْسِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ Who did we teach? We taught Dawood how to mend metal and how to use metal in order to create bows and spears out of metal. Before that they didn't know metallurgy. So Allah taught them metallurgy. And then Allah says, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ So are you thankful for this? So my brothers and sisters in Islam, every one of you must be a zahid in your heart, desiring nothing but the hereafter in your heart, but in your hands have the wealth of the world in your hands. So you can help this deen, and help this religion, and help the vision of the final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot do that if you're dependent on the government. You cannot do that if your worry is how to defeat Centrelink and how to beat Centrelink and cheat the Centrelink in order to make the most money. You cannot do that if your best investment is having more kids so you can get more money from Centrelink. You can do that by Allah if you empower yourself with the right amount of knowledge that will give you more money that you need. And so that by Allah, you can then use that to help Islam and Muslims. It is for this reason why the Jews are where they are today. Let's learn something good from them. Let's learn something good from them by Allah. The Izzah and honor belongs in this world to the person who can control it. Let's stop being moved by the Qadr of Allah. Let's start being the Qadr of Allah on this earth. And this is precisely my request to my brothers and sisters here. My friends, the question is this. Why is it that despite the Muslim world and Muslims being so resource rich, we are so poor? Why is it? I thought long and hard about this question. Why is it that even though we have so much resources, capacity to do so much, yet we are so poor economically and strength wise? And I came up with three reasons. And I don't know whether you'll agree with me or not, but these are my three reasons. Number one, the first reason why I believe Muslims are where they are is because of something called ajz. What is ajz? Incompetency, laziness, sitting back and not doing something, not striking when the iron is hot, but laying still, being soft, being gentle, just sitting back and not striking, just you know, going with the flow. Ads wal kasal, laziness and incompetency is rife in the ummah today. And the Prophet wasallam sought refuge in Allah from this. He said, "Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al adzi wal kasal." And he said that every single day, "Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from ads and kasal." And what's ads? Inability, incompetency, and kasal. What's kasal? Laziness. In Mercy Mission, I do not tolerate people with this quality. I ask them to leave. In Mercy Mission, we cannot tolerate this. The vision of the final messenger cannot be supported by people who are lazy. The ummah cannot rise up if we are lazy, my friends. So I urge you all to remember this point and to train your children to not be lazy. Do you know how we are creating lazy people? We are creating lazy people in our homes and our children, we are creating them to be lazy. Do you know how? Because subhanallah, we give them every form of luxury there is in this world. Winter comes and we buy them a new wardrobe, a winter clothes. Summer comes, no, 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 we can't use last year's clothes. Let's buy them a new wardrobe or summer clothes. Winter comes, we buy them a new duna and we buy them multiple layers of mattresses for more and more comfort. They wake up in the morning, mom's got breakfast ready for them. They go to sleep and mom is caressing their head. Ya salam. And the Prophet wasallam, he trained leaders from a very young age. You know how? Umar radiallahu anhu said, teach your children archery, teach your children horse riding, and teach your children swimming. He said that in authentic narration for Umar. Do you know why? With archery, you become focused on a goal. You've got a straight goal. And so you're very, very clear. You're sharp. You're focused. 
You don't waver. You know if your hand wavers, you will miss the target. That teaches you focus and sharpness. Swimming. Why swimming? It teaches you to cope under pressure. When a child is not afraid of drowning anymore, when he knows that when he is under pressure, if he struggles more, he will drown. So he knows the best way to cope with stress and pressure is with a calm and peaceful body. And why horse riding? Because when a child can tame a big horse, an animal larger than itself, it develops that character that I can also lead men. I can also control human beings. So he develops that leadership in his, in his mind. These things are not simple things. I remember with my son, Yusuf, may Allah preserve him and fix him up and make him into a gentleman. With Yusuf, I used to teach him horse riding at the age of five in Medina when I was. And I taught him swimming at the age of six. But archery, unfortunately, I taught him with, uh, you know, those sticky ones where, unfortunately, no archery yet. <laughs> Khair. The first problem is ajz and qasr, incompetency and laziness. My brothers and sisters, there is no place for incompetency in Islam. No place for incompetency. If you have failed, then try again. If you have failed, then you've just realized how not to do it. If you have failed, then you've increased your chances of success next time. That's all you've done. But Allah, keep on trying and trying until you can do it. When our brothers, may Allah have mercy upon them all, they said, how are we going to do a conference in a, in a hall like this? I just simply told them, what's the worst that can happen? People may not come. Khair. People won't come. What's the worst that could happen? We lost $100,000. All right, we lose $100,000. What's the worst that can happen by Allah? So think about this, my brothers and sisters. Think about this. Do not give in to laziness and incompetency by Allah. And be focused on what you want to achieve. The second reason why people and why Muslims are not making use of the resources that they have and strengthening themselves is something called wahan. What is wahan, Ya Rasulullah? The companions asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyat al maut. Love for this world and dislike for death. We love this world too much and we hate death too much. And because of this, my friends, we don't travel the seas. Because of this, we don't embark on opportunities. Because of this, we don't try new things. Because we are afraid. Oh, I won't give up my job and try a business idea because how am I going to feed my family, we say. I won't give up my profession and try that business idea. Why? Because how am I going to feed my family, we say. My friends, don't be afraid. The whole system was created so that you could serve the masters. MBA was created not to build leaders. MBAs were created so that the people who do the MBAs can work for the entrepreneurs. My brothers and sisters in Islam, if you are afraid, you can never achieve anything in this world. If you are afraid, you cannot drive. But by Allah, you have conquered your fear of driving and your fear of accidents and alhamdulillah, you've started driving. The day you were afraid of falling down, you could never ride your bike. But you conquered your fear of riding the bike and you drove the bike. I ask you all to remember the days Allah. He is the one who nourishes and sustains you all. But Allah, if you truly had tawakkul on Allah, Allah would provide for you. So do not be afraid. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not fear anybody, but fear me. Allah says, fear me, if you indeed you are believers. So conquer your fears. Nothing to fear except fear itself. You cannot become courageous until you've had fear. Because what is courage except overcoming fear? A person who is brave is someone who has overcome his fear. So it's normal to be afraid. It's normal, my friends, but overcome that fear. And I see this problem as something hindering the Muslims all the time. No, I can't do that. Why? Because I'm afraid something will happen. I can't start that business. Why? Because something will happen. So fear prevents us all from so many things. My brothers and sisters, conquer fear. And this fear applies to everybody. 
A brother who is now working now wants to start his own business, applies to a sister who has an entrepreneurial mind, but something is stopping her. Why? She's afraid of losing the $200 she has in her hand. Fear. Now that Centrelink won't support me, now I have to do some work. Fear is a problem, my friends. Overcome fear. Overcome fear. And by Allah, it's easy. The first time you give a lecture, you're very afraid. First time you write a book, you're very afraid. First time you give a course, it's very, very frightening. But I'll tell you what, after that it's easy. The first lecture I gave, my hands were shaking. My legs were trembling. People could hear cluttering. What was the cluttering? My teeth, my molar teeth shaking. But this is probably my 100 or 200 or more than that lecture. I'm not afraid. What should I be afraid of? What's the worst that can happen? Conquer your fears. Overcome your fears, my brothers and sisters, and you'll be able to liberate yourself. Robert Kiyosaki, who is the author of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He says in his book, before you leave your job, read this book. <laughs> it's a nice book. <laughs> before you leave your job, read this book. He says the number one reason why people don't take advantage of great opportunities. Number one reason why they don't take chance of great opportunities is because of fear. They're afraid that they're going to lose their paycheck. They're afraid they're going to lose the regular and constant help. This is what makes Muslim leaders speak in a particular way because they're afraid of losing help from another country. Conquer your fears. Do not be afraid of anyone but Allah Azza This applies both on a government scale, societal scale, organization scale and individual scale. The third reason, my friends, first is ads. Number two is fear. Number three, as we said, is one, which is love of this world and dislike for death. My friends, the corruption of this world is amazing. The pious predecessors, they said, beware of the magic of this world. They said, beware of the magic of this world. For indeed, the magic of this world is worse than the magic of Harut and Marut. Where the magic of Harut and Marut used to separate between a man and his wife. And Harut and Marut were two angels sent to Babylon to teach people black magic. Black magic, the essential thing is to separate between husband and wife. The magic of this world separates between a man and his Lord. So beware of the magic of this world. It's beautiful houses, it's beautiful dwellings, luxurious living, beware of this magic. For indeed it is a distraction. And my friends, this frequently stops Muslims from struggling and striving more. Because they want to preserve their beautiful life. They don't want any difficulty in their life. And because of this and the love for this luxury, love for this world, they don't struggle. But I'll tell you what, if you read the biographies of the greatest people that have made a tremendous amount of money in this world, every one of them, every one of them had to sacrifice something significant. Richard Branson says, I sold my car, I sold my stereo, because I was such a great salesman, he sold that in order to invest in his business. What was his business? Record selling. How did he sell records? From a broken down, broken down uh, telephone, telephone booth. He used to sell records. That's how he started his business. Every single person, my brothers and sisters, has to have sacrificed something significant. It's the test, you see? It's the test. But, but if you cannot do that, if you can't sacrifice, you will not be able to achieve any greatness.